now half past 11, getting close to lunchtime, and we're uh, are at Ballandine Estate Wines. And we're just walking in. I can see my darling's reflection there in the in the glass door, and my own. Right, nicely done. As good as uh, ones we've been to in South Australia. The seats out there you can sit down. We have just bought two bottles here, at, and uh, the lady wants wants to show us a bit about the uh, uh, the barrel room. And um, looks like this is like a, a restaurant, and uh, the bar there with the old uh, corrugated iron. And uh, who am I speaking to? Who? Rianne. Leanne. Leanne will tell us a little bit about the barrel room. The barrel room? Well, this was um, um, the original building was built by my grandfather in the 1950s, and uh, this was the, the building he put up specifically for making wine. Before that, our family had been making wine here since 1928 as a bit of a side uh, business to growing fruit. And these big barrels here are 150 years old. They originally came to Australia from Germany full of beer. And rather than going back to Germany, they were sold to Penfolds, who had them for many years. And then uh, my father was... Where like, in Penfolds? South Australia? No, they actually were stored in Brisbane. They were used to transport wine up to Brisbane um, and be bottled in their factory in Brisbane. And uh, my father was driving past one day, and these big old barrels were sitting out there. This was in the late 60s. And uh, he went in there, bold, brash young fella, and said, what are you doing with those big barrels? And they said, well, we're actually getting rid of them. Do you want them? So uh, he bought them in 1970. We did originally use them for red wine, but now we make them, use them for making all of our fortified wines. Uh, and we use the Solero method. So basically that means that the barrels are never emptied. We take a small portion out each year and then we top it up with younger material. So we've been doing that with these barrels since uh, the late 1970s. And you grow all your own grapes for these? Or we do grow all of our own grapes. Now we've got two vineyards, so we've got 105 acres altogether. So, acres or hectares? Acres, she said. Acres. And um, I think it's 36 hectares if you want the conversion. <laughs> mm. But 105 acres and um, yeah, we grow it all, produce it all on site. Yep. So it's quite a nice little uh, restaurant area. Yeah, except the, it's not open today. No, yeah. the heated, the heated uh, gas fires here and um, more corrugated iron over there. Very well. well. There's an interesting story with the corrugated iron. If you Yes, okay. Um, my, during the war years, of course, our family is of Italian heritage, so my grandfather and great-grandfather, through some stroke of luck, were not interned, but, um, and were able to continue growing fruit for the, the war cause, because in their opinion, they were Where did they originally come from in Italy? Because we've been to Italy. Sicily. They, they were oh, Sicily. Sicilian, and okay. they were, that was, my grandfather and great-grandfather were actually son-in-law and father-in-law, not father and son. Mm. So oh, my yeah. grandma was mm. in there. Um, but after the Second World War, they wouldn't sell houses, they wouldn't sell iron to Italians. Um, so oh. my grandfather wanted to expand, he wanted to build things, but they, he wasn't allowed to buy iron. Uh, <laughs> so he bought a house in Wollongarra, which is an old village, uh, a, a little village down the road, bought an old house which had a shed on it, stripped all the iron off and built the shed that he wanted. Gee. So um, when we were expanding, we needed to get rid of the shed and my father didn't want to lose the iron no, because it was so important. Yeah. That's right. So when we built the restaurant 22 years ago, we built the bar out of that corrugated iron. So the iron has a very oh, special yeah. place in our history. Um, so yeah, it was tough times, yeah. tough times. Yeah. Mm. Hmm. Oh. Very nice. But that wasn't going to stop Granddad. Good on him. Good on him. <laughs> yes, it was stinking rotten, really. It oh. was terrible, oh. wasn't it? Thank you very much for that. Jeez. They've got quite a, a big collection of um, items for sale. Oh. 
Stephen McSchwitz. <laughs> James and probably, uh, I don't know, pickles. Yeah, there's pickled onions there. And uh, look at those little bottles of various alcohol. Hmm? I, I don't know. And even beanies. Look at that. What's that? Hot chilies. Love Indian food. Hot chilies. Chili sauce. Try these are, they, are they onions? I think, I think they're onions. So it's quite a big building. Hand blown Italian glass, lollies. Very well done. We had lunch at the Valandine Tavern Motel of Nachos. A big plate of nachos, enough for two people, for seven dollars. And that's the Valandine Railway Station over there, and the dinosaur. So we're heading back that way to Danthorpe. Right, we'll come up, up from the main, well not the main road, but a, a road. And uh, there's some vines there, and there's that other castle as we call it on the hill. And there's a real carriage up there, which Brent's father uh, put there, and uh, we're just going to take a drive up there and oh, get some from photos. Victoria, darling. The train's from Victoria. We are in Ballandine, the Harrington Vineyard, and there's a Victorian, a Victorian train. What's doing up here? There's Mary sitting in the fay. That's looking more or less towards Brisbane. And we'll see what this train's about. So Brent's, he's looking after the whole place now. It's his, and he bought it from his Mum and Dad, who are now retired, and his father was thought this would be a good idea to put this train up here and rent it for accommodation, which it does happen occasionally. But uh, Brent said it was so big, and it takes a bit to a fair bit to clean it. I'll just walk up onto the uh, veranda. He said I could do that. I gather it would have been electric, or maybe not. Old carriage, John Bunker. I'll show this to you, John Bunker. You may know a bit about that carriage. And that's looking down to the, the building of the winery where we bought three bottles of his Marsala, one of the sherries anyway, fortified wine. So it's got it quite nicely set up. There's even a clock here above the door. Ten past ten. Power operator doors. When the tone sounds, open doors by hand. A second warning tone will sound and doors will close automatically. So this is at Glenalpin at the Harrington winery looking at the front of the loco there's the other winery which no longer exists in the hill next door and looking up from 
where we bought the bottle of wine at the main winery. Just uh, outside next to the train building. And Dan's down there. And there's Faye. And that's the end of the carriage. Right, the our last stop for the day. It, well, it's only half past one, but uh, to the Cherry Lane Nursery. That's a lovely name. Looks quite nice. Please enjoy the tranquil setting of our gardens. As there is an unfenced dam on the property, we ask for children that our children are supervised at all times. And there was a white swan over there, it is. Just through there. Just near where we've parked Faye is this Japanese garden. The unfenced dam. A few little animals here. Over to the left is the highway to New South Wales where we've just come along. And there's some daffodils here. There's a Percy. Mum used to like the Percy's. Couple of magpies over there. Oh, a little walkway here, I'll go around here. baskets. It looks like the entrance, so my darling must be up here. Around here to the left. Yeah, there she is. Lots of talans are hanging down there. I like the signs, they're um, plastic with the little pieces of the graphic on there. It's grasses. Nicely done. There's no Lots of talansias. We know about them and various hanging articles, items. We've had our little nap and it's uh, half past three. I'm going to have a bit of a walk around. That's our motel. We are in the unit second window from the left. Well, it's underneath the TV antenna. That's looking about east. And there's the highway continuing on to New South Wales. And I'm going to have a bit of a look along this creek. And back around the other side of the town. A few ducks here. Some children's play things across just on the other side. Just a little bit further northwards along the bank 
and in this park there's the uh, post office tower over there so that's where the main shops are and there's our units over there to the, just here to the right and this is Southern Downs Regional Council Folkestone Street Stanthorpe Apex Park as you can just see the creek just across the street is the, this little park the Fred Rogers Memorial Park Shire Chairman from 1948 to 1983 so that was a long time and uh, this should be about the, or will be the last time I'll see Stanthorpe, unless something unusual happens. I'll walk around here and up to the main street. And in my last little walk around near the motel, is a, something like an Art Deco house there. And this is the Omara's Pub, an old hotel where we had two very nice evening meals in front of a wood fire and across the street is what I suspect would have been a picture theatre and according to the TV riddle man that uh, he thinks it was and this is another old pub further up the street There's our motel, and with the sun shining right on the water of the creek, and this is the bridge over the creek, Carnarvon Bridge, Quart Pot Creek, Lions Club, Toilets and Barbecue, all nice and green and push bike tracks, running tracks. Barbecues down there, tables. Lions Clubs International Inc. District 201Q1, 2002. So I'm going to walk home now and say goodbye to Stanthorpe. It's Wednesday morning and we've been to Sam's Fruit just back there a little bit about uh, 20k north of um, Stantop and I took a photo of Garfield looking at this setup here and it's obviously to do with the Queensland New South Wales rugby the reserve, there's the blues, there's the kangaroo there with his whistle, football, <laughs> and the Queensland. And we've got to turn to make a U turn in and go, keep going that way to Warwick. So that's the last photo of our journey to Stanthorpe. I hope you enjoyed it as we did travelling there. Thank you.